Hello, you guys. You are tuned into another episode of the Let's Be Honest podcast. I am your humble host, Big Bro Tone, and I am not going anywhere. We made it alive, safe and sound to our episode 10. Now, I will admit to you guys, I should definitely be a little more further along in my entire creative process. I will admit that. I will put the keys on the table. I should be further along. Probably, I'll give myself, I probably should be at maybe episode 13 instead of 10. But, you know, minor setbacks for a major comeback. And each and every day, I'm getting more and more confident in this podcast and shit. You know, it's, um, like I always say, it's about, like I always say, it's about the journey, man. It's always about the journey. And, you know, a lot of the time people don't see you come up. They see, you know, the aftermath. They see the, the glitz and glam after the fact. And then, you know, they be like, oh, yeah, you know, I always supported you. Yeah, you wasn't there shooting with me in the gym. Come on. So, support is neither here nor there. Support is support, and it is always going to be what it is. You know what I mean? And when you when you're confident in the journey, you're always gonna be confident in the steps you take along that journey. When you know you're doing the right thing, when you when you feel that shit in your gut, your heart, you know you're doing the right thing. And uh, yeah, so that was just some morning inspiration for you guys before we get into a lot of the ratchetness and uh, righteousness. So um, some some new music had dropped. I want to say uh, on Friday, like always, a couple new artists. Artists in particular, artists in particular that I want to focus on is uh, Nav's new, Nav's debut project. I guess you want to say his debut album. Um, prior, he's dropped a couple projects um, since being, uh, you know, mainstream and everything. He's dropped, you know, the initial project, um, self-titled Nav. Then he dropped the uh, Perfect Timing with Metro Boomin, and now he dropped his debut solo EP. Um, LP, which is what I'm assuming this is. This is, and also Kevin Gates' uh, first project since being released. He dropped a new project, a three-track uh, mini project, three-track EP. It would have you uh, entitled "Chained to the City." And I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty big Kevin Gates fan. Uh, same thing with Nav. Like, um, for just just focusing on Nav for right now. I feel like I've been a. I feel like I really followed Nav on his, on his path, on his path to success. I guess you'll say. Um, you know, if he was fucking with Nav back when nobody knew what the fuck he looked like, because I guess that was just the way OVO was moving at the time. So I know OVO EXO, EXO, um, the weekend's label. I guess that's the way they was moving him at the time. But he has songs like. Um, Take Me Simple um, Ten Toes Down And uh, He just has He has so many he had, uh, What else Myself He had Diamonds He had a bunch of songs That he came out with On like You can consider him A SoundCloud rapper At first And then he got picked up You know by X On um, the weekend's label XO So you could have You could have considered him A SoundCloud artist Initially Cause That's the kind of sound that you probably hear, but he um he got us coming up through SoundCloud somehow, some way. Um, you know he had a so he hooked up with the weekend, and you know obviously they both from Toronto and shit or whatever. So they both from they both from the Rex as uh, never call it. So I guess that's that's where that connection comes from. But yeah, like his come up was kind of unique. It, it kind of came out of nowhere. A lot of people. Don't really still probably still don't know who Nav is. You know what I mean? I st- I still ride around I'm in the car. People are like yo, who who ball? They're like oh, this Nav. Like, oh yeah, the uh, the boy that don't show his face. <laughs> I'm like yeah yeah, but he should he anyway. So uh, let's talk about that new project, Reckless. Uh, the t- the the project. Uh, no surprise about twelve tracks. So that's typical of Nav. 
Um, and Nav is one of those artists that, even though he talks about you know the drugs, the the pills, the you know the lean or whatever, there's something about the way he does it that that makes it come off as more so. Um, his personal problem rather than the world's problem. Now, let me break that down a little bit. Let me see if I could navigate my way through that maze that's created. So, when Nav talks about his drug use, I don't get the vibe of glorification, if that makes sense. Now, that's just my opinion. I don't really get that energy of glorification from him. If anything, I get the I get the vulnerable. I, get, I I feel I feel like I'm getting vulnerability from him. I feel like more so, it's not the glorification of the drug. It's the this is what I'm doing to get by, because I feel like I don't have any other options. Now clearly, there are other options. There are other ways to get through life besides you know the chronic use of drugs, obviously. But. Um, Let's just stand in the moment, stand on this particular person, trying to look at it as an isolated incident and not just try to generalize his situation. You know, when he talks about it, it's like a... I don't know. I just feel more sympathy for Nav in in regards to the drug use rather than... I'm sorry, empathy. I have more. I just have more empathy for Nav's drug use for some reason than you might hear a little pump talking about drug use or a Lil Xan or whatever or ski mask or ski mask or smoke perp. It's something different about the way Nav covers it in comparison to those type of artists. Now they make. Granted, Nav makes totally different music in comparison to them. I would consider Nav making emo hip-hop music in comparison to Lil Pump's, you know, turn-up music, you know what I mean? In Gucci Gang, it's like, you really feel like he's promoting the, uh, like a drug, like, you know, certain shit. You just feel like he, in his music, he's promoting it. It's more of a bounce. You feel like it's more of like a nursery rhyme or whatever. You feel like he's promoting it. Whereas on Nav, it's darker. You feel like you got to listen to his music more at night. You feel introspective. You feel like you got to, you feel like you got demons that you're fighting against. It just seems more, he just has a more introspective way of talking about his drug use. And I think that's the difference between, you know, having people with you and having people against you. Because even though Nav talked about his drug use, you don't hear other artists, you know, uh, you don't hear other artists coming at him about it or, you know, mentioning his name in particular. When people mention the pill poppers, they don't mention Nav for some reason. It could be because they don't know much about him. But at the same time, it could be because of his delivery. He mixes in so much introspective lingo and, um, he, yeah, he mixes in so much introspective lingo, it's hard for you to even wonder, it's hard for you to even come to the conclusion of, is he doing it for sport, or is he doing it for survival? You feel me? So, you know, I always want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, and I always uh, feel that, you know, we are our demons. Our demons are just a part of us. We They don't rule us. You know, I believe that, you know, we can overcome. It just takes hard work and dedication and willpower. You know what I mean? So, that's getting the drug shit out of it. I wanted to get that out early because, again, I'm not a proponent of chronic drug use. You know what I mean? I smoke here and there. Let me not bullshit. I smoke my weed, but at the same time, you know... The pills, like the the lean, all that shit, that's, that shit just not, I just don't think that's the way, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, in, in, in my personal lifestyle, or just in general, now these are, these are, these are, you know, multi-million making artists who make their living off talking what they're talking about, so I can't come out of their pockets, but at the same time, you know, I, I dig the music, and I think I dig his music in particular because he's such an introspective artist. He gets me, listening to that makes me think so much more about how I feel towards other people. 
how I reacted towards other people, how I may have overreacted in, in regards to certain things that have happened to me or people doing to me. You know what I mean? He makes me look deeper into, you know, or whether or not do I have trust issues or not. You know what I mean? Nav's music is, I think, deeper than just uh, the drug use and, you know, being, being turt and, you know, he got those songs that got the bounce, but on Reckless, you hear, you hear how deep he gets, how personal he gets. Um, on songs like, um, on, on, on songs like Hold Your Hand, he talks about how, okay, we, we've been through, we've been, we've been through this certain amount together. We've been through the woods together or whatever, but at a certain point, I, I decided that, I decided, people what I said, I decided to change my mental thinking and go in a different direction and elevate. Whereas though you decided to stay stagnant, stay on that same level. So he, he he's, his delivery, he can't hold your hand. He's very introspective about it because he doesn't just make it more so your fault. He makes it whereas though I understand I grew up and I understand I left you behind. But at the same time, I'm trying to bring you back now. But I can't hold your hand. You got to make that decision for yourself. And that's deep. How many of us, how many artists, all the young artists out there now, young Philly artists especially, because that's my core, young Philly artists, how many of y'all want to make it? And now ask yourself this question, how many of you, how many people in your circle are willing to make sacrifices for you to make it? Now, especially if they see the potential in you, they see how far y'all could take this shit? How many people are willing to willing to leave what they had, will leave what they left behind, and move forward? Just how many people are willing to make that sacrifice? It's every day people aren't willing to make a sacrifice to ele- to elevate, to glow up, to go to that next level. You know what I mean? So much we don't. We're afraid. We're afraid we're losing something. We're afraid we're losing a part of ourselves. We're afraid we're you know, just using that person. You know what I mean? It's just, it's so many variables that comes into play. And when you, when you, when I view success, I view success as not as a solo project. Success is something that requires a village. And if the village is not on par with what needs to be done, maybe it's time for you to either find a new village or build your own village. Because sometimes the village you came up in is not the village that's gonna support you the most. You know what I mean? So I understand what they're talking about, about, you know, giving handouts, you know. He made sacrifices to get where he gotta be. Why can't you? And he the money maker. You know what I mean? He the most important person. All you gotta do is, you know, be there, do do a job or whatever, support him. Don't put don't 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 put him in those situations. It's very simple. F- that happens a lot. Same thing with Meek. Meek had a lot of situations where he was getting caught up for other people's bullshit. That's not a good look in the rap game. You got too many motherfuckers hanging around. Too many niggas hanging around and not 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 enough people, not enough brothers in your circle trying to keep everything around. Now let me break that down. Like people just want to be around for the fun stuff. People just want to be around for the millions being burned and thrown in the strip club. But they don't want to keep that money around. They don't want to be around when the when the hard work is done. They just want to be there when the fun and the lights is on and, you know, the glitz and the glam and the bottles popping, you know, the girls, the, you know, the drugs, you know, just the parties, everything. They want to be a part of that. But they don't want to be a part of the grind. They don't want to take, make the sacrifice for you to make it because they think if you make it, that takes something from them. Nah. Just because I made it, that don't take nothing from you. You're on my team. We did this together. I need you to make it. But if you become a liability, I have no choice but to X you out of the system, X you out of the, the game plan, the blueprint. Because we all cogs in this machine. But after a certain point, you need you need to upgrade. And when you upgrade your, your technology, when you upgrade your machines, you start to realize that certain parts that you used to use before became obsolete certain cogs, certain parts, certain people in your life that used to be there before are no longer necessary because you've upgraded and found out a way you've adapted to surviving without them. You've adapted to making it without them. 
you don't want to be that person that gets left behind because of the fact that you don't want to change mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, or physically, whatever. I always tell people, as the money grow, you got to grow. And I also even tell people, when the money grow, all that does is multiply what you already are. You know, money don't change people. You know, money just inflates what you already are. So, if you know, it's different, new, it's nuances, obviously. It's situations where you got a homie that made it and he switched up on y'all. Cool, I get it. But that's when you're supposed to take, that's when you're supposed to take the opportunity you had and flip it on him. So now you got your own business going without you going back to your old life. It's ways around things. And you just got to know, you just got to always have an exit strategy. Always have a game plan. And I can't knock Nav for putting that pressure on his own for his homies. I can't knock Nav for putting that pressure on his homies. I can't hold your hand. Other songs that he talked about, or another song that he, he, he kept real introspective. Now, being honest, I made my way to about track eight, which is One of You with Lil Uzi, which song the song been out. So I pretty much listened to the whole project. I just got to listen to the last uh, couple tracks. But, um, he got a song. You know, just think about Nav Projects in general. He had a song on Perfect Timing called Help Me Down. Another introspective song where he talked about the girl that he'd been with and now he's not with her no more and she always held him down and now he regret how he did her. You know what I mean? He just has a way of going about his music that makes it sound more empathetic than sympathetic. You feel him more. You understand. It's... You, you, the introspection, the vulnerability you feel. You feel like he's, well, see, when I'm listening to Nav, I feel like he's about, to, I feel like he's venting to me, honestly. And I, 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 I kind of like that in an artist. I like, I like an artist that uses his music as a platform to vent and just get his truth out there. You know what I mean? But like I said, you know, where there's righteousness, righteousness, there's ratchetness, you know, the drug use in his music. Of course, like, I'm not. You know, see, I'm good at listening to music and leaving it there. It's some people that listen to music and they try to bring that shit to real life and try to copy that shit. That's young bullshit. You got to be above them. You got to be above the noise. Got to be above it. So, on Nav's new album, Reckless, he had a song called Faith, with featuring Quavo, dope track. But I believe, in me listening to the song, I believe that this song is particularly about. You know, that girl, she having doubts in you. She don't believe in you. She, she's starting to believe everything you say to be a lie, you know. But regardless, just have faith in me. But in his, in his way of saying that, he gets deeper in regards to why you should have faith in him and also why you shouldn't have faith in him. That's the part, that's what makes you... I guess want to have faith in him what makes you want to you know believe him because he's not just telling you one side of the coin he said okay this is why you should have faith in me okay this is why you shouldn't but I'm trying see that's when that's that's why that's why I fuck with Nav honestly and Nav's music is another thing I like about him too is that he do a lot of his own beats and if you want if you want most of that money coming back to you that's how you got to be doing your own beats. I think that's why he had Metro on that last project because he didn't want to do all the beats himself. And he realized that would have been exhausting. So I totally understand that. But for the most part, he does all his own beats. Even when he came in, he was making his own beats. Driving down to 401 on no speed and basic bitch asking me with a penis. Put a number in my phone and delete it. Put a number in my phone and delete it. My kid is good as they roll up bananas. Yo, he snapped. Like Nav really, I like, I, I, I'm really a Nav fan. I'm really a Nav fan. I like his production, his sound. I think he made a great decision with the label who he's in, um, as far as EXO. Um, his uh, his team, as far as the people on EXO, was dope. I fuck with Belly, fuck with The Weeknd. Like, I, like I, they just got this this dark R&B, this dark hip hop vibe to them that I feel like separates them from the rest. It's, 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 it's something about their energy that you had to look out for. And The weekend sets the tone for that, especially early on in his career. He set the tone, and then you could tell he clearly had a vision, and he stuck with that vision. 
based on the acts that he's investing his time in, be it Belly and Nav. And I think Belly used to be one of The weekend's producers. So that just goes to show you how they try to keep everything in-house. And they all from Toronto, the Rex. And Nav and um, Belly, I think they're both um, Arabic or Palestinian or whatever. I'm not entirely sure about Nav, but uh, Belly is um, Palestinian. Um, the weekend, not really sure what he is, but mixed individual, probably black individual. Um, they have this energy about them, this dark core, this dark R&B, this dark hip hop about them. That is kind of like one of the driving forces in hip hop right now. Like, it's I, I guess you call it emo rap or emo R&B. Like, I don't know. I don't know. See, hip hop is one of the only genres where there aren't really sub genres that we definitively um, categorize. Um, only in like rock, they have like subcategories that they definitively, you know, claim. You know, I think in hip hop, if we start doing that, it start to become more dispersed, and I think we'll start to lose the core of what hip hop really is if we start, you know, dispersing it. You know, but at the same time, we can't ignore some of these genres. You know that people are creating within the within the culture. Nav etched out his own lane in the culture. The Weeknd etched out his own lane in the culture, and I believe Belly etched out his own lane in the culture. It just so happens that those guys are on the same highway. You feel what I'm saying? So y'all should definitely listen to that Reckless Project by Nav. If you guys haven't already heard of Nav, definitely do your research. Nav is a dope artist. Um, he has three three projects officially out self-titled Nav he has Perfect Timing with Metro Boomin and he has Reckless his debut LP his debut album so y'all should definitely go check that out um, another project that definitely caught my attention above all else is the Kevin Gates EP, Chain to the City. Now, if some of y'all don't already know, Kevin Gates was released some time ago, earlier this year, and he's been, he's on parole, I believe. Or he's, he's, he's literally, he can't leave the state of Illinois. He's, he's literally chained to the city of Chicago um, because of that's where his case, that's where he caught his case and he's on parole there, he can't necessarily leave. So all, so all his family, I guess, made their way to Chicago and, um, <laughs> you know, are settling in there, you know, for the time being. So, him being chained to the city, not being able to leave, you know, you would think that would stunt, you know, his money, which it has. It has limited him from performing in a lot of different places, but the creativity is still boiling, and he's still giving his music. And I got a feeling this project was simply just to check, check the temperature on the whole rap game, just to see if, just to, just to, you know what I mean? See where everything was. That was a that was a free throw. That was a heat check. So I believe the big project is on the way this summer. I'm him. He's been he's been voicing that. That's been his hashtag. That's been his campaign. I'm him. So I think that's the name of the next project, believe it or not. Obviously. So, um, but let's, let's talk about this three track EP. He has three tracks on there. Um track one, change lanes, track two, vouch, and track three, let it sing. Um, honestly, Kevin Gates, you ain't miss a step, big dog. You chronically give us dope music. And it's something about the way he gives us his music. Again, you know, I mentioned how Nav is introspective in the way he does his music. Kevin Gates is the same exact way. But they come from two different they come from two different sides of the tracks. Kevin Gates, Louisiana, you know, never really was a gangbanger, but you know, hit his licks, did his, you know, did his did did you know, lived his life the way he, the way he saw fit, you know, in his hoods or whatever, you know, did his dirt and, you know, he made it to the rap game, but he didn't just make it in your traditional way of rapping. He kind of, where he's from, you would think he just rapped about, you know, the violence and, you know, you know, the lifestyle, you know, of, you know, being a street nigga, a gangster, all that kind of shit. You think he just rap about that, but the way he goes about it, he gives you more so a, this is what I've been doing. 
this is how I did it, but here are the repercussions you need to be aware of. This is how it affected me mentally, emotionally. This is how it affected the people around me. He's, he's, he's a strong proponent of morals, a strong proponent of, you know, what you say is what you mean. He, 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 he believes in word is bond and standing on your own too. He's a very loyal to the soil, down to earth kind of dude. So it bleeds through his music. The honesty bleeds through his music. Going back, just thinking about Kevin Gates is now know this. I got put on a Kevin Gates a little later. I got put on a Kevin Gates around the time of Luca Brasi too. Then I start backtracking. You know what I mean? I start listening to the old music. So I listen to, you know, what you know what what this what this guy really was talking about. And for some reason, like I'm not, I'm not a shoot nigga. I could never be a street nigga. This is not my lifestyle. I'm just not that guy. Like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not solid like that. You know what I mean? But the dude, he finds a way to bring his reality to your reality. He finds a way to make you feel and understand where he's coming from in regards to, you know how open he is, how vulnerable he is in the music. Um, He's, he's he's just honestly a dope artist. And I I feel like you you should, like if you have not, you should definitely listen to Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates is, I, I think he's above your average, you know, down soft rapper because his lingo, the words he uses, like he's, First things first, the dude is smarter than what you anticipate. A lot of people take him for a fool. A lot of people, you know, underestimate his intelligence. But when you listen to the man talk, the man is very aware, very uh, illustrious in his word usage, very um, candid in his feelings. And he just want to, he, he just comes off as one of the most organic acts in the rap game right now. Um, did it from the muscle, bread when his association. I think what I love about his hustle the most is the fact that he really been he held his girl his girl held him down. Drika, that girl, everybody need to get themselves a Drika. If you don't know who Drika is in the rap game, you need you need to find out Drika held this nigga down from the muscle through it all. Drika is the is the girl he always talk about in his music. Cutting up with Drika fine ass. Like And he more lyrical than people give him credit for. The man got bars. You know, you listen to Luca Brasi 2, Murder for Hire, Isla, you know, by any means, one and two. You know, the dude, the dude is a beast. And he only gonna give us more heat. I know he got some shit coming for us and I, can, I really can't wait. Like, Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates, bro, you, 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 you got one over here, bro. The EP, solid. Now, I've been talking to people, and a lot of people feel like, you know, when an artist gets out of prison or whatever, what should their mode of creation, how, what should their mode of the creative process be? Like, like, at what point should they get back to the music? A lot of people have been trying to, you know, come to their own conclusion of whether or not when an artist should get back to the music when they get out of prison, or when they should, you know, focus on the music. Just, just you know, just trying to put a time. All right, y'all, I'm back. Had to go to the bathroom, shit. So we was talking about Kevin Gates and uh, his project, Chained, Chained to the City. Now, three-track EP, dope project. Go check it out, go stream it, download it, whatever you gotta do to listen to it. This is just the prequel to the project, the big project. I know it is. I know he gonna give us some realness, man. I, I could just feel it. Like you, like you know how when just one of your favorite artists about to drop some heat, and you just know it's about to be some, some shit. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm so excited to be quite honest with you. You know, I was even excited about the NAF project. You know what I mean? And it's dope. You know, I'm still, I'm still listening to it to this day. I'm, I'm growing with it. You know what I mean? I'm a. Uh, See, I'm one of those people that I, I, I like the lesson I live for a couple of days, and I listen, then I listen to it. Or um, the, the music the music just has to grow with me. Um, I listen to a project, you know, not pro, not necessarily programming myself to like it, but more so listening to it, trying to find the nuances in it, trying to figure out if I really 
like it for the reason I like it or trying to breeze to find out a reason if I don't like it. Is it really personal? Is it my biased? Or if I just don't like the, the, the production, if I don't like the lyrics or the, you know, I'm trying, I, I try to, I, I give every artist, every artist has a puncher's chance for me. Every artist. I'm one of those guys. You know, I, I, I like to consider myself a perfect blend of, um, Young niggas and old niggas in rap. I'm only 23, but I like to consider myself the perfect blend of that. I give every artist, every rapper, every act an, a, a puncher's chance of, you know, getting me to fuck with their music. Every artist. I don't care if you mainstream, underground, whatever, if you're trying to get on, I give every artist a puncher's chance. And I'm able to tell pretty quickly if I like your music because it's all about the sound of your voice, um, your effort in your production, and, um, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't have the, you know, the resources to have the greatest production. But if I feel, if I feel you, sometimes it's about the vibe, the energy. If I feel you, then that's, that's all I need. You know what I mean? That's, and I feel like a lot of the times people try to put the music above feeling. Sometimes the music is just feeling. Like, like I said, I feel like I'm, I'm a good blend between the old rap niggas and young rap niggas. That's, that's, that's consuming this shit. You know, I'm able to listen to something for lyrics. I'm able to listen. For, I'm able to listen to something for what it is, essentially. You know, like I'll be honest. That Playboy Cardi project, Dial It. I think it's really not that good. Production-wise, the, the the beats, the bounce. Oh yeah, you could party, drink, turn up to that shit, pop a perk to that shit all night, whatever. Like you could you could be up to that shit all night. You can dial it to that shit all night. But the thing is, he's not saying anything, and I I I just really can't. Like it's one thing for you not to say much. But it's like I feel you. It's like, dude, like I, you pushing it, like you. Re- all I'm, li- it's like you scatting, bro. Not and if people don't know what scat it is, scat is a genre in jazz where you say skibbity dibbity do I like like n- like no like like this motherfucker was literally scatting on the whole project. I, I dare somebody to tell me different on on, on play with Cardi's dial it. This motherfucker was just scatting the whole time. On dope ass Pierre beats, but like that's another topic for another day. But at the same time, it's just it just gives you so it, it, it gets me irritated because one we ain't had a, we ain't get a project from you in the past like a year, maybe a year and a half or so. You know you've been doing your modeling thing. All right, cool. We, we, we see you try to you know expand your uh your your reach, you know in the culture or whatever. You know you've been modeling for Adidas and. I think, you know, the, the ASAP mob and model for uh, Gap and shit, you know, all that kind of stuff, Converse. But when you got artists like a Kevin Gates, who's facing real trials and tribulations, is able to give you this much quality. I'm not even going to say substance. I'm going to say quality because even if you're not saying much, the quality of the music can still be there. You know what I mean? Um... You can not give me substance, but still the quality of music be there. I can still sense your effort. I feel like Playboy Cardi just he just had a bunch of beats and he just did whatever on them, and let, and let the, and try to let the features do the work. And I'm I just I I just can't I just can't rock with that. Now I would I will admit I'm not totally against Playboy Cardi. Like I don't I don't have nothing against Playboy Cardi. I like I like Playboy Cardi. You know, as an act, I think I think he's a um, they got a dope swag, a dope energy or whatever. But I just need. And again, I only listen to the project once. So maybe I need to follow my own rule and, you know, live with it, listen to it a little bit more. But I don't want to program myself to like something I really just, I wasn't feeling initially. I can I can just, it just felt like, you know, I just expected more from Flipper Cardi because the last project was essentially the same thing. You know, just him scatting on beats with features and, you know, riding the wave and the, you know, the bounce. But I just thought he was going to give me a little bit more. And... You know, maybe it's just who is who he is. Maybe I, maybe I got to look at it for what it is and not, you know, try to take more from it than what's already there. Maybe I just got to be um, grateful, I guess, for what we have and just, I don't know. Like I said, I give every artist a purchase chance and I'm very introspective when it comes to this music shit. You know, I love it and I try to make sure, you know, I approach everyone fairly because this, this is people's livelihood. You know, people grind for this shit and, you know, when you make it, you know, you gotta, you gotta, make it is one thing, keeping is another. You know what I mean? And that's what Kevin Gates trying to do right now, just trying to keep his train rolling. And I think he, he got, he got, he got such a loyal fan base. It, the South hold down their own so much, it's hard for you to really like, 
count them niggas out. Like Boosie. Went down. Went down for years. Came back like he never left. Dropped his Boopac album. Boopac was amazing. I don't care what no one says. Boopac was amazing. Lil Boosie's Boopac was amazing. I'ma tell you that. And I like and, 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 I, and I'm a rapidly rap nigga. I like lyrics. Like you know, above all else, I like when somebody barring that shit up with passion and lyrics. And honestly, Boosie gave now granted this project came out last year or maybe I think early this year, maybe last late last year, or whatever. But the project itself is so hard. Like Boosie is like like the project is so hard, man. You feel him on every verse, every bar, every track, every like you you feel him on everything. You know, it's been a while since I really banged it, but I remember listening to it, and I'm not again. I'm not, I've never listened to a Lou Boosie project in its entirety, but I listen to Boopac, and Boopac is Boopac is. I think Boopac is exactly what Lou Boosie needed. Boopac is something Lou Boosie wanted to get off his chest. Boopac is something that Lou Boosie, if he didn't get that out, he probably would have, I don't know, lost it. It's so much pain, passion, transgressions inside Boopac. It's so it's so much in it that you need to you need to give it a shot. But you know, back to Kevin Gates. Back to Kevin Gates. The project, the big project, is on the way. I know it is. Y'all see how y'all see y'all see how, y'all see I'm happy about this shit. Like, so y'all need to be on the lookout for Kevin Gates, man. If you haven't already listened to Kevin Gates, give Kevin Gates a try. Dude is dope. Dude is super duper dope. You know what I mean? And he and, and he give you both sides of the coin. He give you them down south records. He give, but he also give you the the raw rap. Like, and he got like a Jamaican. I don't know what it is. Like he got like this Jamaican flair or this Rasta like seasoning on his music a little bit. Like the way he delivers some of his words, he got like this Jamaican little tinge to his music. It's weird. Not weird, but it's unique. Maybe that's why I like it. He has like a this 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 vibe. This I don't know. He has like this like I I, I don't know how to describe it. I'm just gonna call it like a Jamaican vibe or Jamaican seasoning on his music, just a little bit, like a pinch. He real good with that. And, uh, and I love when he get melodic. Can't really get somebody that can get real melodic. And he can't even sing a lick, but he got, the way he sing is like, you, it's, it's, it's like a young thug. Young thug is not the best vocalist, but he has some of the most unique vocals in the game. So you have no choice but to rock with it. Believe it, people probably don't know, Kevin Gates and Lil Boosie from the same, you know, city, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Kevin Gates, I don't know if he was there from Baton Rouge. Let's find out. Is he from Baton Rouge? From Louisiana, yep, Baton Rouge, yep. So, and then I think NBA Youngboy from there as well. So, and they all quite decent artists who they don't just got the down south sound, but they rap too. So, you know, the South is the South has always been solid in the rap game, never faltered. Y'all just go check out that Kevin Gates and shit. Go check out the EP and be on the lookout for that project over the summer. Now, there's some other things I want to talk about that piqued my interest. Not not necessarily probably eventful, but piqued my interest like hell. So um, this is music aside. This is just pop culture. This is just the, the world we live in. It. Uh, so I was reading an article in the uh, what is it? The Washington Post. I was I was reading an article in the Washington Post. It came out. I want to say it came out yesterday, and apparently a border patrol agent thought it was okay to detain two U.S. citizens at a gas station because he overheard them speaking Spanish. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let that rest a little bit. A Border Patrol agent decided to detain two U.S. citizens 
because he overheard them speaking Spanish at a gas station. Now, let me just fill in the context. So, this incident took place in Harve, Montana. Harve, Montana is a town located about 35 miles south of the U.S.-Canadian border. Pay attention, y'all. Harve, Montana, where this incident took place, is a town located about 35 miles south of the U.S.-Canadian border. Also, the two citizens who were detained, there were two Mexican-American women who simply just stopped out for some milk and eggs. Granted, it was midnight, but who gives a damn? You have every right to stop anywhere and everywhere at any given time for whatever you want at any store, if it's open. So, two Mexican-American women in Harve, Montana, a border town about 35 miles south of the U.S.-Canadian border. The town only has about maybe 10,000 people in it. Small town. Now, I will give this cop credit in this respect. He didn't dodge the bullet. He told them exactly why he stopped them. He said, I stopped you guys, or I'm detaining you guys right now, or I'm asking for your ID right now is because, and this is all video, by the way. You can look this up. I'm stopping you guys because I heard you guys speaking Spanish and in this area we don't have nearly anyone if any if anybody at all that speaks Spanish it's very 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 rare so I stopped you on those grounds he said my me stopping you wasn't racially motivated at all I believe it was a little bit but at the same time like dude relax like okay I think this is where I get lost in the whole situation you have you detain two Mexican women in the border town 35 miles south of the Canadian border last time I checked Mexico was on the border with Texas and whatnot and, and California and whatnot and New Mexico I, last time I checked Mexico was down south and Canada was up north so you mean to tell me you thought it was okay to stop two Mexican-American women because they were speaking Spanish in the town nowhere near Mexico? Okay, dude. Pump your brakes. Relax. I don't care if you never heard nobody speak. I don't care if you never heard anybody speak Spanish at all, wherever you are. I don't get, I don't care. It, it, it just, you don't, you don't have the right to stop someone because they spoke a language that you're unfamiliar with or that you haven't heard in this area or what, whatever. The reasons you gave don't give just for you detaining these women. I'm, I, that's the kicker for me though. Harve, Montana. You think motherfuckers jumping the border from Mexico all the way to Montana? Niggas is trying to get to California. Motherfuckers trying to go to New York. <laughs> Motherfuckers trying to get to, you know, Texas, El Paso. You know what I mean? You think motherfuckers trying to hop the border to go all the way to Montana to do some bullshit? Come on, man. Come on. We got to do better. We live in a society right now where people are just stopping colored folk for any given reason. We got we live in a society right we live in a society right now where people just calling the cops on colored folk for just having a barbecue. Calling the cops on colored folk for just taking a nap in the common area. Calling the cops on colored folk for just having a good old time. It's a damn shame. How much more do we have to prove to you guys that we are human beings and we deserve the same rights as you? I don't care what reasonable suspicion you had. Now, in the article, they do say within a certain amount of distance to borders, you know, border patrol hikes up, you know, their their aggression. You know, they get a little bit more, you know, they pressure a little harder with the closer you get to the border. So, okay, maybe that was the energy he had. Maybe his energy really wasn't racially motivated. I'm going to try to give him the benefit of the doubt because I'm not going to, I don't think everyone's a racist, but I do feel that every white person has the capability of being racist. It's just whether or not you act on that shit. So, um, and besides the 
I, the fact that he didn't dodge the question and he was pretty straightforward in his answers kind of gives me the benefit of the doubt. It makes me look at him like, okay, was he racially motivated? It makes me doubt whether he was or not. Whether or not you shouldn't stop someone because you heard them speak a language that you deem as unfamiliar to the area. You don't have the right. You, you're, you're, you're not a lawmaker. If anything, you just enforce it. We pay your taxes. And to make it even worse, these women are citizens. They're Mexican citizens. Not like they had their green cards. and like they're, they're Mexican citizens, I believe. I believe at least one of them was born in here and one you know, has their papers. They're legal. They're, they're Mexican citizens. They're, they're Mexican-American citizens. They're legal as fuck. And they still, you know, got taken advantage of in a sense. And it sucks, you know what I mean? That just goes back to so many different situations. You know, a black young, an African young black woman sitting in Yale in the, in the common area working on some assignment. She passed, you know, she decided to take a little nap. In the process, she wakes up to a white student calling the cops on her. What kind of bullshit was we living in, man? Talking about you don't belong here. You can't do this here. The, the, the key, the key notes and same thing with that barbecue shit. The white woman calling the barbecue, calling the cops on the black people for cooking using charcoal and the park or whatever, it, the bullshit. Like the key word I keep hearing is you don't belong here. Excuse me. As far as I'm concerned, you don't fucking belong here. You don't belong here. Y'all stole this land first. We the fuck was forced over here. Shit. Let's keep it. Let's keep it a buck. Y'all forced us over here. You know what I mean? And now you try to claim we don't belong here. Y'all don't belong here. How about that? And I'm not even petty like that. I'm not even vindictive like that. But guess what? I'll leave with my blackness first. I'm a young black man living in America. And at the end of the day, my life is always in jeopardy when I get behind the wheel, when I'm anywhere. My life is always more in jeopardy than a white man's. We live in a society where it leans more towards white male supremacy. And we live in a society where shit, the women are stepping up to white woman supremacy as well. They is fucking getting reckless out here. Seriously. At what point do we have to prove our humanity to you guys? The fact that I spoke a different language from you made you question my citizenship, made you question me as a human being, made you question, made you had to validate who I was. I know who I am. I grind and I work hard and I deserve to be here as much as you. So just because your fucking ancestors wrote the shit on the dotted line, that'll make it right. This country was designed for white men, designed for y'all to prosper. But it's, it's a game changer now. We pulling the curtain back on all these motherfuckers. The bottom line is stop stopping people based off of what you assume. When you assume you make an ass out of what? You and me. Stop it. It never been cool, never been the way. White people, stop feeling so threatened by black people. Y'all outnumber us, so shut the fuck up. You outnumber us, so stop feeling so threatened. Remember, y'all brought us here, so reap the fucking benefits or reap the reap what you sow. Now we here, and we and, and now we now we taking control. We placing our stamp. You know, we leading with our blackness and we not letting y'all forget that, hey, we going through something called post-traumatic slave disorder. As a people, it go both ways. Post-traumatic slave disorder in regards to, you know, black people, we, we, live, in a, we live in a society right now where we're constantly being fed information that belittles, belittles us and takes us off the mission. We live in a society right now where we're, we're blaming ourselves we live in a society where we're putting the blame on other people. You know, slavery was not a choice. Slavery was not a choice, but today we have the choice to free ourselves from mental slavery. We're fighting a, we're, we're, we're fighting a fight that, that will continue to go on after, after we die. Mexicans having to prove, and, I'm, and it's, it's fucked up we live in a society, a society where the term Mexican automatically is deemed disrespectful. And I can understand, if, if that's what you deem as disrespectful, I don't wanna call you that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we, we've developed these narratives that just 
we've, we've developed these negative narratives around the term Mexican. We've developed these negative narratives around the term black or what it means to be African-American. But all the, but all the positivities, you know, all the pure, all the clean shit is around, surrounded, you know, is been depicted in the white, the, the whitewashed world and shit. It's just that the world has conditioned us to believe black is wrong, white is right. We've been conditioned to think that Mexicans are less than and they, that they don't deserve a fair shot. That's not cool. Border Patrol officer, I want to, I'm, I'm on, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt and claim that you're just doing your job and doing your due diligence. But you're dealing with two women, two Mexican women. Relax, dude. Mexican, two Mexican American citizens at that. Get off your fucking high horse. Relax. Go into the gas station and get your fucking donut like you plan on getting, and just keep it the fuck pushing. That's all you had to do. <laughs> Seriously. That was my passion to spill for the day. Now, time to get a little weird. I was reading another article in Complex, and for some fucking reason, again, we're talking about, you know, fair treatment and, you know, you know, black people is not taking shit anymore. And guess what? We're not taking shit in the workplace, especially not, in, and we're definitely not taking shit in the porn industry. <laughs> apparently, apparently, an adult film star who go, an adult film star is suing a director for a racist shoot involving the N-word. I got this from Complex. Shout out to Complex. Uh, the black film star is his name is Maurice McKnight, but he goes by Mo the Monster. <laughs> he goes by Mo the Monster, and he repeatedly told them not to use the N word in the in, in the scenes and shit, and they continued to do so. And he felt like they totally went against his wishes and disregarded him. It was considered harassment. And he's fighting for fair treatment and respect in the workplace. And he's, you know, they they, they, they put the videos out, out to be sold and everything. He's fighting, you know, against fraud. And, you know, he's he's trying to get, you know, what's, what's, what's coming to him because he feels as though they took advantage of him. They used him, they, he told him. He told them, he told his other co-stars, do not use the N-word, they continue to use it anyway. And he feels taken advantage of. Listen, we're not taking shit in the office in the office space. We're not taking shit in the workplace, and we're definitely not taking shit in the porn space. <laughs> like, it's black motherfuckers fighting for us on all facets, on all fronts. We need everybody fighting. So I commend you, my brother, for fighting on all fronts, even in the porn industry. We need respect in that, in that shit too. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it a buck. If we fucking, and you call me a nigga, shit, that shit just gonna make me go harder. I'm gonna be honest, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. I don't want to take away from the mission. I don't want to take away from the the underlying moral of this whole situation. But shit, if you if we if we fucking, you call me a nigga, damn, like I, I mean, I'm in this shit, like. But <laughs> you guys were tuned in to another great episode of the Let's Be Honest Podcast. I had to end on that note. I had to keep the energy high for you guys. I want you guys to stay humble, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay hungry. God is love, and it's the only love. Saladin.